Welcome to St. Joseph, Missouri and Phil Welch Stadium where we're seeing the St. Joe Mustangs and the Carroll Merchants. I'm Charlie Marshall, joined alongside Tyler Bermundo and we are in for a good one tonight. Tyler, last night the Mustangs dropped their first game of the year. The 12 game magical winning streak sadly came to an end. And guess what, the team that beat them, the team we're seeing out here tonight, the Carroll Merchants. What, can I, what am I gonna see tonight, Tyler? So you look at the standings, and the Carroll Merchants sit at six and nine, and the Mustangs sit at twelve and one. But from what we've seen, that six and nine record does not do the Carroll Merchants justice. This, these is the, this is the fourth meeting between these two teams. We saw them win at home on June six, nine to seven, in a very close ball game, and then away the Mustangs won seven to four in eleven innings, where Don Felix hit a home run in the bot in the top of the ninth to tie it, and then their nine to six loss yesterday. It was. 6-6 six to six after 3, and the Merchants took a lead in the 6th inning and never came back. They lost 9-6 to six that game. So I expect a very good matchup. I also expect a very good pitching matchup. Roy Holcomb out there for the Mustangs, and he has been probably your ace so far this season. Yeah, He's thrown 11 innings, striking out 13, and only giving up one run. Zero earned, so he has a zero ERA on this young season. For Carroll, they have Billy Robertson, a right-handed pitcher, and although his... Walk rate's pretty high. He's walked 8 in 12 innings. He has a 3.75 ERA and a struck out 14. So I expect a much more low-scoring affair than what we've seen previously. Of, you know, a pitcher who's getting ahead of at-bats is this one's going to be shot up the middle. Going to be a tough play from Bodenhausen, who can't make it. The full count pitch. McClure waits on second base. It looks like that's a... Pitch clock violation of some sort. At Luther College, he slashed 247, 330. That one's poked out to Freeman in center field. It looks like McClure is not going to test out Freeman's trust arm. Trust your stuff. Trust your location. Missing up there with that pitch. And if he's really balls, he's going to throw some off speed in here for a strike. The 3-2 is missed up and away. So Roy Holcomb, who we talked about as being a huge strike thrower and a little bit of uh, control issues right now as he just walked in a run and matter of fact that's his first run all year just given up trust his stuff gave up a couple weak contact hits this one's going to be hit up the middle Holton's going to have to go one but he trips up and has no chance and right now this in this mink league season he's caying about 28 percent of the time brandon Berg. so good taco hitter placement and also a just a good hitter to have up now with the bases loaded for the mustangs the 0-2 is right down the middle as Jordan Brandenburg does nothing but watches. So Roy Holcomb gets himself into some trouble, works his way out, but the Merchants get two. To the Carroll Merchants who defeated them yesterday. That's a first pitch. Base hit from Arrington Eason out to Glick in right field. So back-to-back -back innings for the Merchants where they've had their leadoff hitter on. That one dug by Hepburn who caught Eason in a bad spot, and he's hosed at second base. Great play. Great dig from Kyle Hepburn back there. Delivers a strike. I think that was more better de defense than bad base running. That was just a great job popping up out of the crouch from Hepburn there. Quick adjustment. Recognized the runner was going, and great throw. Got him. The 3-2 is going to be hit out into right field. So another base hit for McClure and the Merchants. That's our second hit of this inning. He has two hits with a combined exit velocity of about 100. Yeah, so do the math on that. It's about 50 <laughs> exit velocity. Wow. Charlie Marshall, math whiz, ladies and gentlemen. Just trying to, um, you know, make sure we're all knowledgeable about the situation. So Dutler stepping in. He's one for one on the day. Takes first pitch one, and Hepburn shoots one into center field. I can attest, when you're behind the plate, the first hot game of the year as the full the full count pitch misses high. So that's Aintrezek's second walk on the day. That's Holcomb's fourth. The base is loaded. Pitch is driven out to Freeman in center field. Who brings it in? We don't have the splits, but I see Billy Robertson as a guy who has reverse splits on the mound. So that means he pitches better against lefties than he does righties because of his devastating changeup. Most of the time, it's the other way around. Same side, same, same pitching side, same arm, same bat. It's a lot tougher because a lot of the breaking balls are moving away and the fastballs are coming in on your hands as that pitch misses outside. But because of that changeup, 
he has such a good out pitch to lefties, but his curveball just doesn't do the job against righties. Uh, Felix was hitting home runs in the ninth inning as maybe Hepburn just got one right there. He sent a charge out to left field, and that one over the wall. Kyle Hepburn, his first home run on this young Mink League season. That's one way to get the Mustangs on the board. He said if Dom Felix can do it, I can do it too. As he got a fastball up in the zone and the first guy in this Mustangs lineup to do damage on a mistake pitch. And that's gonna be the key is when this guy does make mistakes, he's made quite a bit. Gotta do something with him. Great piece of hitting there from Kyle Hepburn. Flip, get that ball out early and low. Might have had a chance, but burner down the line. Another base hit for the Merchants. Eason's thinking about going to third and he is. Glick, who had who had McClure stuck in no man's land, throws it to the backstop, and Hepburn taking a little too much time. Allows Eason to come all the way around. So the air on Glick is gonna allow for a a run for the merchants. So the thought was there. I thought that was a very smart play. But sometimes when you have a guy hung out to dry like that, you kind of baby the throw, overthink it a bit rather than trust your arm and trust what you have. And it cost him there. And also, Hepburn didn't, didn't predict that bounce off the wall. He kind of chased it a bit rather than getting to the spot early. Eason hesitated a bit at third because of that, but he ended up being in there standing. So good thought process from Glick, but just a bad error, a costly one at that. The 3-2 is hit out to Hoskinson in left field. It's not going to get over his head, but it'll be plenty deep enough to bring in Truman Bodenhausen. Is it exactly what Freeman wanted? No, but you had a two-strike count. He Pretty good fastball away, kind of on the black, and he did enough to bring in the run there, and it's just chip away time. But it's like almost having two different styles of pitching, and it can be tough to mix them both in. Duller was fooled in the swing shows. Jeter Mose with an over-the-shoulder catch and a great throw home, but it skips away from Hepburn. And that's another run for the Merchants here in the top of the sixth inning. Jake McClure with just a very smart play at third. He gave the impression he took four hard steps to the plate, making Mose make a throw. And it wasn't a bad throw, but it got away. And that run was manufactured by the runner on third who just scored Jake McClure. To answer what you were talking about earlier tonight, the Mustangs have had three ground outs and 11 fly outs. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. That's a very high ratio. And I think it is the mix of the pitcher. He doesn't really throw a lot of break balls. He likes working up in the zone with the fastball. Get the baseball above the barrels of the bats. But at the same time, these Mustangs guys are taking a lot of big uppercut swings. Freeman was well aware that Brandenburg corralled it. There he goes. There he goes, and it's going to score it away. And this one's going to allow a run to score. So in comes Noah Bodenhausen, and to second goes Darius Freeman. And now it's just a three-run deficit here at Phil Welch. I know that run doesn't mean too much, but you can't strand it and come up with a 6-4 deficit in the ninth, as he's going to do just that. Mason Holton looks locked in with that swing right there. Good opposite piece barrel to right field, brings in Darius Freeman. 6-4. Shrack up the middle. That'll do the job. It's going to be a ground out. But the run plates home. The 2-2 is swung on in the dirt. This time Hepburn just tags. No need for a throw. So Bryce Hoskinson goes down. Diego de Santiago getting the job done out of the bullpen. Throwing it almost any count. Bone Alvin pokes one to right field. And because of how deep... Harris is playing out there and right. That's going to fall. Mason Holton. Swings and misses. That'll do it tonight here at Phil Welch. The Mustangs just a drop of magic short as they strand the game-tying runner at second base. Your file tonight is 6-5 to five in favor of the Merchants. The Mustangs drops their second game in a row.